It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for being with me today on a Friday. My friends, we have made it to yet another end of the work week and I am happy that you are here for this Masterpiece Friday episode because we're going back to music by Dream Theater. And the song that I have selected today is called Sacrificed Sons. Uh, I picked this one actually a few months ago. I first uh, was made aware of this particular song uh, earlier this year around Memorial Day when I was trying to pick a song that was going to uh, be uh, on the channel and commemorate that day. And this was one of the songs that was, that was suggested. And when I learned that this song specifically relates to the events of September 11th, 2001, I decided to schedule it uh, for a first time listen and reaction uh, near the anniversary of those events. Well, today is that day. It is Friday, September 9th, 2022, and this will be the last video that I release before the 21st anniversary of uh, the attacks uh, that happened on 9-11. So uh, Sacrifice Sons is from Octavarium, the group's uh, eighth studio album released back in 2005. Previously from this particular album, uh, I have listened and reacted to the title track, Octavarium, which is a 24-minute epic, and I very much enjoyed that one. I have also listened to The Root of All Evil, which is the third installment in the band's 12-step suite. like that one as well. Uh, this song's lyrics were written by uh, vocalist James Labrie, although, as I read in, members of the band noted that there was quite a bit of discussion and consideration uh, to the song's wording and to its candor, because this is heavy stuff, right? We're talking about a terrorist attack in New York City, and the band's from New York, right? So it's it's pretty it's pretty heavy stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I have been encouraged to not listen to the original studio recording, but instead to make use of the live version of this song from Score, which is Dream Theater's live album recorded on April first, two thousand six, at Radio. City Music Hall in New York City. They uh, are joined on stage by the Octavarium Orchestra in this clip. And uh, this scene has been described to me as, as really a, a cathartic thing, which is why I've been encouraged to, to watch and listen to this particular version of this song. We've got New Yorkers performing in New York City offering a tribute to their city for their New York fans. And since it was recorded, uh, we get to join in the tribute and to be included in that, That's which is pretty cool. So let's get to it, y'all. This is uh, James Labrie on lead vocals, John Petrucci on guitars and vocals, Jordan Rudis on the keyboards, uh, John Myung on bass, Mike Portnoy is on the drums, percussion, and backing vocals. Just a little bit of a, a trigger warning, y'all. We're talking about some terrorist attacks here. So just know what the um, what the subject matter is before we, we dive in. Uh, I am looking forward to seeing what the band has come up with in this song. As I understand it, it starts off with uh, some some clips, some news clips from that particular day. So... Okay, I think I am ready. I hope you are as well. Off we go. This is the next to last song on the album. And that's an E flat in the bass. Yeah, they're over an E flat. Kind of sound. Sure. 
Up to E. Now this is a part of um, the whole Octavarian thing, right? Where they start with one key and they do a song in each different key. And this is the next to last. They start in F and they end up on F. So this one's in E. It makes sense that that intro was in E flat. They're moving up. That's cool. above it and then that's a circle of fifth to f sharp to b nice yeah. Yeah. c major seven which is the sixth chord Classic danger motive, right? Perfect fifth, then down to a tritone. That's cool. Nice. That's over E. That tritone melodically. That's awesome. Who would wish this on our people and proclaim that his will be done? There's hmm. flat six. I love the harmony in the folk. Praise their sacrificed sons. Hmm. There's that tritone, right? B, B, B flat. Nice. Six to two, two to five, five to one. It's a modified circle of fifth progression. Some funky meter that I can't figure it out <laughs> so far. Fun. Get it now. I wish my fingers moved that fast. during this section. The band's like, we'll take it from here. We'll be back with y'all in a little bit.
a sound that is, right? Full of angst. I love the bass through this section, y'all. It's just driving right through my ears. seeing uh, Mike and John on stage uh, later this fall as part of John's uh, solo tour. Really looking forward to that. They rain go right down to the E. There's still an E. Woo! Tritone, still getting in there over that one chord. Okay, this is interesting because they're going, um, they're on, they're in E minor, right? And he's singing a B to a G to an F sharp, C, then back to B, G, F sharp. But the chord they're going to when they go to the F sharp is a C chord, right? They're going, yum, yum, sorry, dum, uh, Right? It's C down there, but it's got an F sharp in that chord, so I'm not sure if it's actually acting as a C or if it's like acting like what I played there was F sharp half diminished, which has an, uh, an A, an E, and an F sharp along with that, that C in it. So I am curious to know, uh, to hear how they finish uh, putting that together. That's really, really cool. Here we go. There's a flat six to the seven, flat seven. Imagine how cathartic and powerful this was in Radio City at this time. There's no time to waste. Who serves the truth for heaven's sake? That's some candor. By minor thirds, so it feels like diminished chords there.
that is how you end the song. I would have been on my feet at that particular moment. Um, and I don't know how emotionally I would have been at that particular moment because, I mean, we all, we all have 9-11 stories, don't we? We all, it's one of those things. Uh, if, if we're old enough to remember where we were, then we do, right? We do remember where we were. Um, me, I was uh, living in New Jersey at the time with, with my uh, new bride. Megan and I got married literally like uh, five weeks before 9-11 happened. We had been uh, honeymooning in Cape Cod. We get back. School starts. I'm right in between my two years of my master's program. And it, it's the beginning of the academic year. And this happens. And I remember it was a Tuesday, right? And I didn't have an early morning class that day. And our alarm, our, um, you know, we wake up, it was to the radio and we're used to hearing a certain DJ or a certain style of music. And we were hearing Peter Jennings or, you know, I'm like, what, what is going on? Why is, why is ABC news on our radio? It, and we soon learned and it was a, um, just a day that changes lives, right? Changes all of us. It changes um, from a personal standpoint to the way we think about the world, to the way that we think about our own government, our military, uh, just the stability of the globe about religion that that they um, put in a little bit in the um, in the lyrics, uh, and it just it's it's a whole new world now. Th this is uh, something that will. Uh, change everything and and they're asking a bunch of these questions and they're um, just paying homage to that and uh, here in the outro God on high our mistakes will mankind be extinct there's no time no time to waste who serves the truth for heaven's sake hmm who gets to be who gets to be the arbiters of truth when it's religion versus religion or ideology versus ideology. Uh, and it's scary. It's, it's absolutely, uh, it'll, it'll cause you to have some butterflies. It does me even to this day, 21 years later, I, we didn't get into the city, uh, or we were able to get into the city, uh, to, uh, to see a baseball game of all things like three or four weeks later at Yankee Stadium, and it was uh, just an unreal experience being there with the people that live in that town. You know, this happened on their home turf, and it was everybody coming together and just rallying because we know that our emotions are frayed, and we're like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You know, we just got to keep going. We got to keep going. And uh, what a powerful song what a powerful song this is it starts off with those samples from the tv news uh before uh before they play and it gets us kind of set on what the you know what they're talking about and and in verse one uh, walls are closing anxiously channel surfing frantically burning city smoke and fire planes were certain faith inspired it's like like what is going on like in the moment uh you know it's cell phones are new <laughs> <laughs> the internet is is new. Uh, we don't have broadband typically, you know, like all over the place yet. We don't have the smartphones, and it and uh, it was difficult to get information. And you're just questions and questions and questions, and uh, and just scared shitless. That was me. Um, I I remember going to the uh, to the grocery store. I'm like, well, we 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 better go get some food. And because I don't know what's going to happen next. So I remember just going through the grocery store and it being quiet, just quiet, nobody talking. And people are just, just beside themselves with, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm getting what I need, I'm going back home. 
Um, it's a major, major thing here in the United States. It's changed us. It's changed the world. Uh, and um, it's... I'm just um, amazed at the um, at the musicality and the power of this particular song as a commemoration of the day. I have heard several tunes that try to encapsulate what that day was like, what we were feeling, um, the emotions of that day, the raw emotions of that day. And this is as effective as anything that I've heard. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite an achievement. So uh, thanks to Dream Theater for writing this, for performing it. They are from New York, and uh, they're sticking up for their hometown. They're sticking up for themselves. They're sticking up for America and for peace. And uh, people just uh, not being uh, irrational and, and doing this sort of stuff. You know, it's like, come on now. We're all in this together. We're all in this together and um uh we we move forward and we um we're made we're different for sure by the experience uh but we don't want it to happen again and we want to make sure that we're that we're being the best versions of ourselves and and not being hateful or judgmental uh being slow to anger as much as possible give people benefit of the doubt i mean we're you know in most cases, we're doing the best we can out here. And um, it's 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 a song that I uh, really identify with, and it just brought me right back to that day. So this has been an extended uh, set of remarks as I end today's uh, episode, but uh, it just got me thinking about what it was like that day. So I thank you for uh, being with me today, for, for watching uh, something with such heavy... Um, material that we're talking about, uh, I think it makes us better and it gives us better perspective when we dive in. And art can be the prism that can help us to navigate these uh, thoughts, these ideas, these memories, these experiences that we've all collectively gone through and how we feel about them as an individual and as a member of society. So uh, good on you, Dream Theater. Uh, I... Um, I think enjoyed is the wrong word, but that was a hell of a tune and it's really effective. And uh, I'm happy to have been able to listen to it for the first time and share the experience with all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your support and uh, for being here with me. We will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.